Hey, it's Tim here. 21.4 is coming soon. Tableau have updated the page to tell us what's coming in this new release. So let's get stuck into these features and find out what's coming soon. Okay, so the coming soon page is live. I'll put it up on screen so you can go and check this out for yourself. It's also in the description, so you can go ahead and click it. Skip this video and just go read it for yourself if you want to. But I'm going to talk through these as quickly as I possibly can, just to give you a very high overview of what's going on. Now, if I scroll down, um, this is sort of interesting because as these releases sort of start to come, there seems to be something always new with the coming soon pages. Uh, normally we get some sort of announcement of the actual version here, but it just says coming soon. Uh, no release date as ever, but that's to be expected. So if we just do a quick rundown, we have virtual connections, connected apps, ask data and Slack integration, centralized row level security, published data sources, copy and paste in dashboards, hallelujah. Tableau Exchange, hire me for Tableau Public. Tableau Accelerators, these are essentially dashboard starters. It's a bit of a rebrand, but it's going to sort of um, get a big boost, I think, in this release. Replay animation, so see animations again. Salesforce style color palettes, yes, yes. Salesforce is creeping more and more into the product. Uh, new formatting capabilities, mobile improvements. Mobile, mobile is one of the best parts of Tableau. It's just not used enough. And I love seeing improvements to the mobile experience because it means that hopefully in the future, uh, these devices become a prominent way of using Tableau. Let's carry on. Multi-data source support in map layers. Now, I really struggle to understand what this meant so we'll get into this a little bit later on and I'll update you. Metrics improvements, especially the ability to embed metrics in the embedded um, sort of capabilities in Tableau. So instead of embedding a viz, you can now embed metrics. That's super cool. Accessibility. This is the second time in a row that accessibility is getting improvements. So it's really something that Tableau is focusing on here, which is great. Inherited lineage descriptions. This is going to be cool um, when you're working with the data catalog and you want those descriptions to sort of propagate throughout your your data sources, Tableau bridge multi-pool support. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, subscription emails for, for flow completion. So essentially the ability to be told when a flow has finished. Uh, new connectors in Tableau Exchange. The Tableau Exchange was one of the biggest announcements in the keynote. And now we're getting the new connectors starting to sort of trickle in. Essentially the marketplace is getting filled up, which is good to see. Support for Linux, RHEL 8.3 plus. This is for Tableau Server. Tableau Server ATR. This is um, authorization to run. We'll get into this a little bit later, so don't worry too much about that. I'll try and explain it the best as I can. And last but not least, offline activation improvements. Uh, this is going to be, again, another quality of life improvement, especially those people who have to pick up Tableau servers in disaster recovery scenarios. So that's pretty much a rundown of all the features. Now, I do have to say, this is not always the full list. This is just simply what marketing has decided to focus on in this release. When we actually get the official release and the documentation comes out, there is always a list of changes and new features. And some of them are just so small, they don't make it into this sort of headline set of features. So uh, don't assume that this is it. There's a whole load more. In fact, Tableau normally put out a slide showing you all the features and all the changes on their own announcement page. So look out for that. It's going to be something interesting there as well when this one uh, comes out as well. So that's a rundown of all the features. Uh, let's get stuck into these a little bit more. Now, before we get stuck in, I just want to highlight, look, you can go and catch all of the previous versions and all the previous releases over on tableautim.com. If you go to tableautim.com on the homepage, you'll see that the 2021.3 banner is there. If you go to that, you can see that I've got 14 videos on 21.3. If you go to the playlist page, you can see that I actually have a range of playlists across different topics. Um, look at this image. This image has disappeared. What the hell is wrong with that? Websites. I just can't, I just can't stay on top of them. But nonetheless, you can see here I have a playlist on 21.3. I have one on 21.2. I've been doing these for quite a while. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to check these out. If you miss conference, I have a bunch of content here from conference as well that kind of summarizes it very quickly. But we've also got some live streams that I did with Ravi. So be sure to check that out. Now, if we go to the release and start to go through this in more detail, I always like this. This is always a little bit of fun. So let's start with virtual connections. Now, when we click on these, Tableau is normally very good by giving us these drop downs. And this is sort of what I rely on to talk about these features. So Virtual connections. Virtual connections are a new content type in Tableau Server and Tableau Online that are used to create and share access to tables. Essentially, you've got the ability to create a connection centrally on Tableau Server, and then other people can use this connection to connect to data. It's a pretty sort of straightforward feature. Securely embed service account credentials, define data policies, and extract data centrally. So this is really cool because when you centrally define connections, 
and you're doing it within the server um, sort of environment, what you can then expect to be able to do is to define who can see what essentially. So um, something that I think think is also a separate item here. You can see it here just below centralized very level security. This is almost an implicit capability of being able to do virtual connections. So the idea is you create a virtual connections and you democratize that across the business. And then what you do with centralized row level security is you put in security policies to essentially define what people can or can't see depending on what part of the organization they're in or what groups they're part of and so on and so forth. So these two features really come in unison. You can't, there's no really point in doing virtual connections if you're not then going to give people the ability to do row level security. What I'd love to see in the future is column level security. So not just being able to say, hey, these rows are available to these people, but even pulling out metrics and removing them for certain users. That would make some dashboards so much easier to build, especially in fast moving consumer goods environments where some business units can see certain metrics. Let's say finance can sometimes see finance metrics, but salespeople can't necessarily see the full data set. That's sometimes a requirement in some organizations. So I can't wait to see where that goes, but as always, this is the first release. So let's look forward to see what Tableau does with this over in the future. Okay, if we go back up to the top, we've got connected apps. Now, connected apps is sort of a difficult one to understand. It can kind of sounds like an app store has been launched or something sort of weird is out there. Well, essentially, the way to think of this is Tableau's rebuilt the way it handles connections from other applications. Other applications can essentially be built by developers. Let's say you're building a web portal and you'd like to embed Tableau Vizs inside of your portal. Well, in order to do that, you need to be able to authenticate with Tableau. And in order to authenticate with Tableau, you need to develop some form of trust. And that trust can essentially be a handshake in the Tableau world. This has essentially been called trusted tickets. In other parlances, you might've heard of things like single sign-on and that being another de facto way of handling trust between two applications. Essentially, what Tableau has done is they've made the Tableau server and Tableau online setup more in line with what happens across web technology today. So this is going to make it much easier to create an application and have it talk to Tableau in a way that persists, that is easy to use and manage. And this, I think, will enable new things in the future. So um, if you think of things like the Tableau Exchange, it's kind of important to have this because as people start to integrate more and more into Tableau, these are the kind of connections you're going to want them to be able to create. So I'm not a techie. I don't fully understand the full benefits of this. I'd encourage you to maybe go watch a developer session. I'll try and find some if I can. Um, I don't think there has been anything publicly yet, although there might have been something at conference. So if there has been, I'll put it in the description below. Be sure to check that out. Next up, we have Slack. Now, Tableau keeps making this feature even better. Of course, we've had Dreamforce and Tableau Conference talk heavily about Slack first analytics. What we've got in this release is the ability to share a viz from our data to Slack. So it's not quite both ways yet. You still can't use our data in Slack. That was sort of touted to come out at some point next year. But in essence, this is the first step. So we're going to get incremental steps here to try and make this feature better. And it's good to see sort of Tableau stick into that roadmap um, there. So that's pretty straightforward. We've talked about row level security. That's a pretty straightforward one. Um, I think that's going to make it easier. The row level security paper by Tableau is one that you have to kind of go through to understand all the different ways you can do this. Every time you come across a solution, it's just a standard thing. Again, I'll try and put that in the description below. I'm going to have so many resources in these descriptions so uh, bear with me as I get those all in there but nonetheless um, definitely check out that white paper to understand why this is actually going to be a great feature. Um, edit published data sources. Now what is cool about this is I believe you can rename and edit a published data source from the web authoring interface. So here we go. Manage data sources on the web just got easier. So that's the key thing here. Not in desktop on the web. So you have to go on to Tableau Online or Tableau Server in order to get this benefit. Say goodbye to downloading published data sources to desktop to make your changes. You can now edit published data source directly in Tableau Server and Tableau Online, test your changes and publish all without leaving the browser. And then those changes essentially propagate down all the way down to your workbooks, including being able to rename the connection. So that's kind of useful. It's going to make a lot of workflows a little bit faster. Sometimes what you have to do is you'd find a problem in a published data source. You'd have to open a workbook pull the data source down, republish it back up. And if you've forgotten the credentials, you'd have to sort of make a local copy, create a published data source. You know, it's just such a mess. So this is going to make things a lot, lot easier. 
The next one, I can't believe we're really celebrating this, you know, and it's kind of funny. It's, it reminds me when Apple uh, brought copy and paste to the iPhone in like version three, and it was just such a euphoric moment for everyone who had an iPhone, because until then, you literally could not copy and text text in a message. If you can't remember that, then you're probably too young to be uh, know about this, that this was even a thing. But it took Apple like two to three years to bring copy and paste to the iPhone. Apparently, it was a really difficult challenge. But nonetheless, here we go. <laughs> Tableau sort of doing the same thing, uh, copy and paste in dashboards. Now, I got to be honest, I have mixed feelings about this. Yes, this is going to be a great workflow uh, benefit. If you've got a button and you want to create a duplicate, go ahead, do it. Now, what is not 100% clear is that um, what exactly, what are the parameters where this is going to stop? It does say here, easily copy and duplicate images, text boxes, web containers, um, web page containers within the same and across different dashboards and workbooks in Tableau Online and Tableau Server and Tableau Desktop. Okay. So that doesn't include buttons. That doesn't include uh, visas and charts. So this is going to be one of those things where you kind of have a habit, copy and paste. You think it works everywhere, but in actual fact, it doesn't. And those particular features, like if I wanted to copy a sheet, I'd right click duplicate. So there's another sort of, there's sort of two worlds appearing here where in one set of uh, objects, you copy and paste. And in another, you create duplicates. So I'd really love for this to be just sort of unified in some way or form. I'd really love things to have sort of one unified language. So if I copy and paste, it's copy and paste everywhere. If I'm on a dashboard, I'd like to copy a chart and I create a copy, it automatically creates a duplicate sheet for me and vice versa. If I copy a button, it creates a duplicate button for me and not having to sort of just work within the sort of confines of images, text boxes and containers. Um, now, what would be interesting is to know is if the objects in the containers come along with those containers. I haven't really had a play with this. I'm deliberately waiting until the thing is out because these things do change sometimes in the beta process. I know there's been a lot of Twitter posts about this and it's basically gone viral before the release, but nonetheless, it'll be good to see how this is implemented. So looking forward to putting this uh, to the test. That's going to be really, really sort of nice to see. And the Tableau Exchange, there's not much to share here other than to say, look, the Tableau Exchange is pretty much here. If I actually go to uh, another browser window, let me open up another browser window here and we just search Tableau Exchange. Um, I believe this is already live. If I just go here to extensiongallery.tableau.com, this is what they're calling Tableau Exchange. So um, it's just a rebrand of the Tableau um, Extension Gallery, but now they've given it a home to include extensions, connectors, and accelerators. So this is pretty much live already. You can go check this out. No need to wait for the release. And this is going to be interesting. The great thing is that it has some compatibility going back to 2018 1.2 all the way to 2019.3. So essentially these versions are going to have support. There is a bunch of versions here. So 2020.3 and 2020.2 and I think 2020.4 are all losing support, uh, basically have lost support in this month. So be sure to sort of up, up, check your upgrade process for those things due to security issue in Postgres. But nonetheless, everything is available here and you're going to be able to sort of just browse this. So I probably should just do a whole separate video on dashboard extensions, connectors and accelerators and really just sort of take every single one of them for a spin. Maybe these are better as a live stream. Try and see how many of them I can get through in a single live stream and just sort of get dig into them. How easy are they? Are there prices? All of those questions. If you've got interesting questions you'd love to know about these, let me know and we sort of take them for a spin at some point soon. Okay, if I go back, um, the the thing I should also add about the exchange is I, th I think it also deserves its own video because um, it's a real ch step change in the way Tableau thinks. Tableau talked a lot about the higher the economy, the Tableau economy. So this is going to be a fundamental part. Think of this as the app store for Tableau. And the developer program is basically going to be what's driving all of this. So the economy is the people around it, essentially the developers, uh, the exchange is the platform and uh, everything else needs to be sort of formed over the next few years to really make this a thing. For now, it's just a web page that's been rebranded. If I go to the Hire Me button, this is really, really cool. And I love this feature because Priya is actually a colleague of mine at the Information Lab. Um, she definitely does need hiring, at least not yet. But um, look, at, look at our profile. She's got an amazing sort of Tableau public profile. You can Google Priya Padam and you'll find it um, on Google quite easily. But nonetheless, in LinkedIn, sorry, not in LinkedIn. <laughs> this should be on LinkedIn. 
But on Tableau Public, you've now got a hire me button to let people know that you're available for hire. So people can actually send you a message directly. And I believe this goes to your email. So this is going to be really, really nice. And people can get in touch with you and say, hey, are you available to work? This is great because it really starts to make the Tableau Public profiles the centerpiece for the economy. Essentially, all the effort that we've invested over the years on our Tableau Public profiles is certainly going to sort of come to use. Now, I'm in a bit of a sticky situation because I have not published anything to public in ages. It's just something I just haven't had time. And to be honest, the passion to really get involved with. I've really struggled with stuff like Tableau Public. I'm a consultant. I build stuff for clients. I like to solve problems hands on. I'm not so creative when it comes to sort of making these amazing visits that really push the creative boundaries of Tableau to the very edge. So I just I just doesn't sort of just doesn't come to me naturally as wanting to do that unless I'm passionate about it. So quantified stuff from Formula One. And those are the things I'm going to start doing more of in the future, because there's a pretty much the only data sets that I really sort of um, get excited about, if that makes sense. If I go to the next item here, this is Tableau Accelerators. Again, these are part of the exchange. So it's kind of like two announcements in one here. These are dashboard starters, essentially templates that you can put into um, your particular organization and just have something to go right out of the gate. This was actually uh, made uh, possible via a purchase of a company called Lintao. Um, again, I can never remember this name. So Salesforce acquires... Um, Salesforce acquires a lot of things, so this does not help. Um, so you can see I've Googled it in the past here. <laughs> Lintao SA. There you go. I don't know. I don't even know how to say that. If you know how to say this properly, let me know. But no, we're thrilled Salesforce has acquired Lintao SA, a global Tableau partner based in Switzerland that delivers analytics and dashboard templates and consuming expertise and consulting expertise in dashboard design. So Lintao uh, business. Uh, they basically make templates. I don't know if there's a link to Lintar website here. There probably isn't. So if I just go and grab this link, maybe the website has been um, sunset. No, it's still there. It's still there. So um, I'm surprised this is still here, um, essentially. So maybe they're, they're keeping this up as the consulting sort of aspect of the Salesforce uh, acquisition of these guys. But essentially, if you're looking for a dashboard, these guys have built templates in lots of these sectors ready to go. And what Tableau have done is they've essentially brought these over and they've turned them into what they call dashboard starters and have now rebranded to dashboard accelerators. So this is basically what this is. So you can go over here to the accelerators tab from the Tableau exchange and you have them pretty much ready to go. So if I click at this one opportunity view, you'll see there's a dashboard ready to go, which shows the opportunity wins and losses. And it's a very basic starting point. But for companies who have zero, this is a great starting point. And the other thing is these come with data sources in there. And then what you've also got are partners of choice. So these are essentially partners that are going to be able to sort of help you deal with this. So I don't know how sort of that list has been brought about. I'm a bit sad not to see the information lab in all of these. But nonetheless, um, if you want to check us out, be sure to check us out. I'm certain we could kick out on pretty much all of these templates. So uh, be in touch, let us know more, and uh, we're more than happy to help. But nonetheless, if I sort of keep on on my march of the new features accelerators are here they're essentially templates check them out once they're available replaying animations this is a pretty obvious one um you see an animation you kind of see it play through and um, they've now got a new icon that lets you sort of replay them so that's a pretty straightforward one there's not much to sort of celebrate there salesforce palette oh god you know salesforce is slowly creeping into tableau uh, you know it's 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 slowly happening and this to me feels like a totally unnecessary change you could have just shipped us all TPS files. Um, in fact, that's probably all that's happening. They've changed the TPS file in the base and soul of Tableau and they've called it a feature. You could have done this without this. It's sort of not necessary. I could have sent you a file with all these features. In fact, if you've got an old version of Tableau, I can send you the TPS file so you have this feature too. It's not something that's exclusive uh, to this particular version, but nonetheless, here they are. You can use the Salesforce colors. I think this is so that your dashboards can look and feel a bit like Salesforce, right? So you can build dashboards that sort of blend into the Salesforce environment. So that's um, that's going to be useful to know. A new formatting capabilities improvements to the web essentially. So choose from a variety of number and date formatting options for parameters on Tableau Online and Tableau Server. Essentially web edit looks like it's getting a bit more beefed up. So the formatting capabilities for parameters is going up. For date fields, use any common date and time format or quickly customize it according to your company standards. So formatting slowly creeping in. 
Essentially, WebEdit is catching up to the desktop version. I keep saying that this will be the year every year. Hopefully, this is actually the year. Improvements to mobile. Uh, find the data you need faster with collections and shared with me now available in Tableau and uh, mobile. So this is a nice sort of catch up mechanic here. So Tableau and mobile didn't have collections and shared with me. This is now a section that's available. So that's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. We'll actually be able to play with this once the app gets updated. Uh, multiple data source um, support in map layer. So this is really cool. Um, let me just read through this so I can try and make sure I've understood this correctly. The capability of adding an unlimited number of layers to your map visualization got more powerful. With support for multi-data sources and map layers, you can now analyze more data in the context of one another. For example, you can build a map that shows your retail store's location, accessibility, population, and revenue all coming from different data sources. So this is super cool because previously what you had to do is get all of that data into one data source. Uh, using either the data model or whatever other sort of mechanism you wanted to use, uh, joins or whatever. And then once you had them all in one data source, you then had to use map layers to sort of get them in on each other. With this one, what you can do is you can essentially bring in disparate data sets and just create the mapping assets from them because essentially the mapping um, items don't really need a context because you know the world is the context, the map is the context. So I'm super interested to see how people hack this. Um, map layers were already pretty, you know, virulently hacked. So I'm looking forward to see what creative solutions people come up with for building charts with disparate data sources. Um, basically, <laughs> you can take sort of map map layers to the next level and just build visualizations on one sheet, essentially, with this capability. So that will be really, really interesting to see how that works um, and what people do with that. But yeah, I'm fully anticipating the hacks for this release um, for this particular feature. If you're using this for mapping, this is going to be a nice quality of life improvement just makes things that little bit easier now if i go to metrics improvements this is cool the two things have changed here you can embed metrics in an embedded platform so you instead of just embedding a viz you can actually just take the metric instead the metrics are nice because they're consistent they feel really nice and because they're designed with the sort of big ass numbers um, and a sort of a spark line they look really nice and they look sort of standardized and this is one of those things where we're not building the charts it's actually being done for you so you build a dashboard create a bunch of metrics from it you could even create a dashboard purposely for the benefit of metrics and then once you've done that, you go take all these metrics and you put them in an embedded platform just as a bunch of metrics. And when people click on them, they go to the relevant viz. Super cool, right? So that's now a feature that's going to be available in 21.4. The other thing is you can now do status indicators and targets inside of this as well. So you can say, look, this is the target. This is the value. And when it's above, do red. And when it's below, do green. Okay, you might choose blue and orange instead of those colors. But nonetheless, that's going to be a nice quality of life improvement. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, that uh, when it lands. I've also made some assumptions there that you can change the color. But again, we have to wait and see these um, when they come out. Accessibility is always important at Tableau. More improvements for keyboard and screen reader accessibility on Tableau server and Tableau online. You can easily walk headers um, you can easily walk headers to select and access them to view data. You can also hear verbal descriptions of all the member names of the field. So slowly adding this in, I, it's one of those things I have to use it to really understand what's going on here. If you've never done it, give yourself the challenge of getting to a dashboard without using your mouse, essentially. And all you can use are the um, keyboard, essentially. And you can even give yourself the added challenge of going on the Tableau landing page closing your eyes and only using your keyboard to navigate to the various things. In order to do that, you have to understand the accessibility capabilities of your laptop. So be sure to do that beforehand and then go from there. It's a really, really tough challenge. A colleague, a colleague of mine, Colin uh, Smith at the Information Lab, he made us all do this and it really made me realize the challenges and the accessibility poses to individuals who have accessibility requirements. And for the record, whenever you have accessibility improvements, it doesn't just benefit people with accessibility needs. It benefits everyone because everyone, to some extent, does benefit from accessibility needs, whether it's making text bigger, clearer, improving contrast. All of these things make using these products a better experience. So uh, these improvements are always good for everyone, not just for people with accessibility needs. If I go to the next uh, feature, inherited lineage descriptions, 
Um, with this one, uh, essentially ensure that column level descriptions from data sources and workbooks are shared downstream. So essentially you can type up descriptions in the catalog and then downstream, at least on web edit, these are picked up. I believe that it's only in web edit though. Everywhere that the data source or workbook is used, the descriptions will be consistent. This also enables descriptions editing at a single source. So I'll have to test if these descriptions sort of propagate down to desktop. I think they're only available in web edit and um, in the sort of um, metadata context of Tableau Online and Tableau Server, but I might be wrong with that. Let's wait till that ships to find out. Tableau Bridge uh, Multi-Pool. So this is essentially the concept of having multiple Tableau Bridge clients running. And uh, with, with Bridge Multi-Pool, it's a bit of a tongue twister, I keep not being able to say that, you can achieve multi-network connectivity with online schedules. Multi-pool supports bridge pools for each network so even the largest enterprise organization can see and understand their private network data in Tableau Online. So basically, I think this is a high level view of all the different Tableau Online clients you've got running and being able to pull them all up to do specific jobs. Again, I'll be interested to try and see how this really works. If you've used Tableau Bridge, um, I'd love to see sort of if you know where this might be of use. Um, the only use case I can think of is when you have large organizations, and I'm talking really large organizations, running Tableau Online in lots of different places. And uh, you essentially need to be able to run Tableau Bridge in lots of different places to keep up with all of those requirements. And by using a pool of machines to do this, um, you can then sort of orchestrate each of these pools in a more sort of organized way rather than just, you know, relying on one machine to have to do everything. So um, it might make things like extract refreshes and schedules a little bit more manageable because you've got a central hub for managing all these um, queries that are running. So essentially this is going to allow this to be distributed across um, a bunch of machines essentially. If I go to the next one, subscription emails for flow completion. So essentially, I believe when this flow finishes, you'll get an email. Say, look, this flow completed. Um, I'm hoping you can also have a notifications when they don't finish. I think that's the one I'll be switching on, but it's good to know. Maybe you're depending on the flow to do something. Um, that's going to be uh, great. And, um, and one of the things I'd also love is I would love this flow subscription to trigger an email subscription. So the same way we have linked tasks in Tableau Prep, I'd love for when this flow uh, completion runs, I'd love to then be able to trigger a subscription email for a dashboard because of course at that point, the subscription's up to date and that's the best time to send it. And it means that you can have tasks running when they're necessary rather than just running on a schedule every hour for no reason, essentially. So uh, that's going to be a really, really sort of nice uh, sort of quality of life improvement if it gets added in the future. Um, we've got new connectors on the Tableau Exchange. So Tableau are adding more connectors um, in this uh, sort of space. So the 25 connectors, including a new one for Salesforce Marketing Cloud, Zendesk, ServiceNow, SAP HANA. And essentially what I think is happening here is they're reaching out to their partners and they're telling them, build the connectors for Tableau put them in our marketplace and let people start connecting to your data, which is a good way to do it. I think um, it's pretty useful. Now, these next few, I need to double check my sources because I'm not a fair with all these terms. I don't even know what RHEL 8.3 means. If you do know, um, let me know. I think this is a version of Linux. OK, so let's let's go. Let's just Google this. Just, let's just do the dumb thing, which is um, it's not the dumb thing. It's actually the most intelligent thing. So Red Hat uh enterprise linux r-h-e-l that's what that means okay we now know what that is so essentially this is a flavor of linux and they're specifically supporting version 8.3 uh onwards essentially so in tablet 21.4 tablet now supports deployment on linux uh red hat uh, enterprise linux 8.3 plus so what i'm interested in what are the other versions because it says plus um, let's agree and just accept these, but uh, let's go to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Oh, so there's actually a version nine. So there must have something, something must have changed in 8.3 that was fundamental. And now you can pretty much run 8.4, 8.5, and nine is currently in beta. 
And the reason this is good is because typically you want to stay up to date with these releases because the releases tend to patch security fixes. So if you're not been able to update beyond 8.2, let's say, assuming that's what Tableau supported before or maybe never supported, um, from 8.3 plus, you're going to be able to sort of um, get the updates going, at least for your operating system. It's one of those things you just have to check. You never know if upgrading your operating system is going to break Tableau. And at least I think for that, um, that's going to be useful for people to know. Next one is server authorization to run, server ATR. Now enabled by default, server authorization to run um, ATR. Product activation makes licensing Tableau server in cloud container or virtual environment deployment easier by removing the need to refresh or deactivate keys and removing or reducing maximum activation errors. So I get what this feature does. Uh, I'd love to know the mechanics of how it does that. Um, so again, when the documentation comes out, we'll have a dive, we'll have a look at it, um, and we'll try and sort of get those um, out and explained. Offline activation improvements. Um, for air-gapped Tableau server deployments, benefit, benefit from the removal of a single pass activation for the first license fee, clear error messages and improved file naming. Uh, clearer error messages and improved file naming. So again, I... I, I, I I haven't worked with uh, air-gapped Tableau servers enough um, to really understand the impact of this. Typically, most Tableau servers I've installed have had some sort of internet connection, so I've always been able to rely on the activation methods that's sort of publicly available. Um, so I'd love to know, if you've used an air-gap server, I'd love to know what are the challenges and why does this feature make life easier? Um, when the documentation comes out, this might become more apparent as well. So yeah. That's pretty much all the features. Boy, it's a, it's a weird list. Um, it's a real sort of hodgepodge of features, but I think they're all sort of cute and small and it's definitely not a quiet release. I think there's a lot in here that everyone is going to like. It's not one of those big hitter releases with something like the data model in there, um, but it's definitely a nice set of features to close out the year. So that's pretty much the video. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And um, when I make these long videos, they're a real slog and <laughs> I know that some of you do actually make it to the end, typically 10 to 20% of you. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, you're exactly the kind of person I'm actually interested in getting some feedback on uh, because essentially I'm going to be doing a review of Tableau, the whole entire year's release of stuff. Essentially, I'm fed up with the way that Gartner mess up the reviews for all these BR products. So the only real way you can try and change that is to do a better review of the product itself. So imagine a review done by someone who only uses one product. It's probably not that useful but we can critique a bunch of things that we didn't see that we'd like to see and a bunch of things we want to see that we did see so if you know what those features are if you'd love to see a review uh, let me know what you'd be interested to see in the review itself in the comments below i'm really really keen to hear more the other thing is this friday i'm going to be making a video about 2022 uh, essentially next year on this channel i've got lots and lots of stuff to change and um, we have grown incredibly fast we've gone from basically zero um sort of tablet related subscribers three years ago i started on about 800 just making these you know weird videos about layout containers and so on and so forth i didn't really do anything i started at less than 800 and we're now at 21,000 as we are today which is crazy in the space of three years i really believe that there are more people out there that could benefit from understanding more about tableau but in general, understanding more about analytics. Essentially, um, Tableau is not the only product that I know everyone uses. People use Excel, people use Alteryx. I just did a survey a few weeks ago and it closed out with Alteryx being the top product that people want to know more about. So that's going to be something that we're going to be exploring as well. So on Friday, I'm going to go into all of this in detail. So depending on when this video comes out, it better come out on Thursday or Wednesday. Otherwise, me saying this is going to make no sense. Uh, but nonetheless, um, thank you for staying to the end. I'd really love to know your feedback. Let me know in the comments below and check out the video on Friday because you're going to be the absolute perfect audience for that if you've made it this far. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.